So the DMC5 demo came out all of a sudden on Game Awards, and me and Daniel here are going to do this conversational discussion on the demo. Uh, I have quite a lot of thoughts about it, and I thought this would make for a pretty interesting review or video or something. I don't know. Uh, so first of all, Dan is Dan. He makes stuff on YouTube. Yes, I am certainly me. That, that is certainly something yes. that can be said about me. <laughs> yes, yes, it is. So uh, I can finally justify the fact that I bought an Xbox and not a PS4, which feels very, very good. And I can rub my console in all of your noses. So For a little bit. That, you enjoy while it lasts. <laughs> well, yeah, whatever. PC is not getting the demo. It's only Xbox and PS4. And we don't know when PS4 is going out. Well, I do own a PS4, but unfortunately not an Xbox. Um, so I'm going to have to just ask you about the demo and try and, and, and pick your brain on what what the demo was like. Yeah, well, first of all, like, fuck, it's DMC. It's, it's DMC4, but it's better. But better, okay. It's the flat, like, if you want to click away from the video, you can do that now because that's what, that's the thing that we're going to be talking about for, well, mostly. Uh, first of all, it looks so good. See, that that's like, the thing that a lot of people aired their grievances towards was the way the game looked because if you look back on, like, Devil May Cry 3 and 4 in particular, they had kind of an anime-ish kind of look. And Don't Make Cry 5 has this very more photorealistic look. And it made people go like, uh, I don't know, this looks a little bit like the reboot. How do you feel about that? Yeah, well, like, I still have my E3 reaction recorded. And I rewatched it a couple of days ago just to, you know, like, it's been a while since the reveal. And I want to kind of, like, look back on what my initial reaction was. And it was weird. It was a knee-jerk react. Like, as soon as I saw Devil May Cry 5, I knew that this is not the reboot anymore. Like, that's behind us and all the leaks. And Daniel being... Daniel Southworth, uh, the voice actor for Virgil, being a dumbass and not being able to keep his mouth shut also. <laughs> you know. You know about the thing. Like, we knew it was in the works and... Last year we anticipated the reveal. This year it finally happened. But it's it looks like a fusion of it looks like the ideas from DMC Core were made with the visual drive of the reboot. And I really like how the reboot looks. I'm one of the few people that really really likes the reboot, except the gameplay part. Like only the I'm sorry, like only the gameplay part, but not the story part. Like I just skip the cutscenes, play the game, and I enjoy it. Like, that's, that's my standing up. A lot of people say that Devil May Cry looks like the reboot. And I'm going to have to pretty strongly disagree with that. I always felt that the the reboot looked kind of gaudy. And the the new game, it just looks more realistic. It just has a more photorealistic look to it. And the reboot was never going for that. So I think, I think it's just not like the original games and that's what's giving people the knee jerk reaction and they're and because they're having a negative reaction and they also had a negative reaction to the reboot they are immediately going oh this looks like the reboot without actually comparing them and and actually assessing whether that's true or not yeah well there's always gonna be dumbasses on the internet but as to like going back to my previous mm -hmm. point my knee-jerk reaction was very, very... Like, it was unexpected because everybody anticipated DMC5 to be, like, 4 made in 2018 or 19 or whatever with, you know, the style and the bright colors and, you know... But, like, even Dante's coat isn't red anymore. It's more like a dark wine color. And Nero looks different. He looks like a human. He looks like Nero and not Dante 2.0. Because that's, frankly, that's what Don Nero looks like in DMC4. Yeah. He looks like Dante from DMC3 in a better engine. Like kind of, it. yeah, I could see and now that. He, yeah, and like now he's his own person. Like, you look at him, that's Nero. You look at Dante, that's Dante. 
and I like that a lot. But the main um, sort of take I get from the whole stylistic change is that, like, let's face it, DMC is 18 years old at this point. Yes. And now it looks like a franchise that does whatever it did back in the day when 3 and 4 released, but it does so in a package that looks up to date. Kind of like God of War. If like if God of War looked the same way it does, but played the same way it did, that's what DMC Five is basically. The God of War reboot, soft reboot, yeah, re- rather soft reboot something. Like if it played, if it didn't have that shoulder fixed camera, and you know the second analog stick was your dodge thing, and the camera was fixed, that's exactly what's happening with DMC. They're just making it look how it should look in the year 2019 when it's going to release. Okay. Now, I wanted to ask, uh, since you played the demo, uh, do you only play as Nero, or did it let you play as all three characters? Uh, No, you only play as Nero, and it's the demo that was playable at... before Dante was revealed, Mm -hmm. basically. The E3 demo is the demo we got now. It's exactly the same. Okay. Except, unlike... The, the, the dumbasses at IGN who didn't call Nico, you can answer a phone, a phone booth, and Nico comes, and she's your divinity statue now. You, like, I think divinity statues are gone, at least for Nero, and instead there's, like, phone booths in the environment that you, like, you pick up, a, pick up the phone, Nico just shows up in her van, and that's your upgrade hub. And, and I really like that idea, because it introduces kind of like the truck is now its own character uh especially uh, since it's collectible that, that is yeah interesting but doesn't do much for me personally because i almost never use divinity statues ever yeah me like me neither who uses divinity statues like aside from your maybe first or second playthrough but it's still nice that there's interactivity for the first playthrough no yeah yeah um I think the only time I ever really used them was maybe in Devil May Cry 3 to switch styles. And that's about it. But I still, again, I, I would still say it's pretty neat. It's pretty cool that they decided to recontextualize it like this. Just because we've been using Divinity statues since the first Devil May Cry. So it's just, it's cool. Like, oh, all right. You know, just it's the same concept, just done a little differently. Yeah. Also, what I want to address is the performance, because people have been saying that it's DMC5 is not at a constant 60, which I didn't notice all that much. Like, there were a couple of hitches here and there, and that was only during the boss battle when, you know, the shit gets down and, you know, all the buildings and whatever. But I have the first Xbox One, like the big, thick brick. Oh, the, v- the, the, the VCR. <laughs> the VCR. Yeah, I have that one. And DMC5 looks better than Final Fantasy XV, which is the prettiest game I've ever played, probably, from a like purely graphical standpoint. But I, I haven't played Red Dead 2 yet, so that might change. But like, it runs so much better than Final Fantasy. The resolution is just like there. It doesn't move. And the frame rate is perfect. And I'm very surprised that you can, like, the RE engine at this point is so good that it can run DMC5 on this piece of garbage and the PS4 too at a constant 60. And it's going to be at a constant 60 on PS4 too. And the hitches that we have right now, I don't have a doubt that it's just like, like a bug or something that he's ironing out yeah i mean this is some i'm gonna let people in on a little trade secret and that is that optimization is the last thing that is done think of it like this it's kind of like when you're writing a script the last thing you do is edit it it's the same thing with video game development optimization is the thing that you do at the end so just because don't make cry 5 may not be running quite as smoothly as you may like that can change before the release. Yeah, definitely. Absolutely. Also, another thing that I noticed 
was that they changed De Niro's snatch, the grabbing ability, quite a bit, except only on the bosses. On normal enemies, it's basically the same. You know, you snatch, you either pull yourself to them or you pull them to you. The same concept. But with five, in the boss battles, in the Goliath boss battle, so like in four, if you grabbed, let's say, Burial, the actual spot that the devil bringer grabbed onto was always fixed and nero would always stop at the first physical object like his arm or his leg or his tail like the first thing that he collided with that's what he would grab onto but in five it's different in five the snatch since it's like a physical wire now and not just like a spectral hand whatever it connects with first is the thing that Nero is going to snatch himself onto. So if a Goliath is swinging his hand and the Devil Breaker happens to hit his hand while you're snatching, you won't go through it and like appear magically in front of his face. You follow the hand around and then you'll be in this like kind of a weird position. And I don't know, like the RE engine dude, like, I, I don't know. It's, it's, that's interesting. It's, I think it makes, it kind of forces the player to be more mindful of how they use it. They can't just like willy nilly just use the snatch ability. They, because if the orientation of the enemy, um, is different than what they wanted it to be, then it will affect mm -hmm. how they play. So I think that's actually pretty mm -hmm. neat. Yeah. And actually quick little side note. Uh, I'm pretty confident that the next Monster Hunter game is going to be uh, made in RE, in the RE engine. And if they take what like this mechanic and give it to a weapon, like a new one or an existing one, I'm probably going to jizz my pants because that's just oof, so good. <laughs> I was I was having a talk with my friend about this a couple of days ago, and we just, yeah, like, dude, this will be awesome. But we got to tell Capcom we want that. So uh, we were briefly discussing this before the actual recording so i'm going to bring it up now um how do you feel about the game's speed now i do know that you have played uh, most of the don't make cry games if i'm not mistaken i've after played the fact. all of them i played all of them a lot but like not not just that but like after the fact like you didn't play them upon release or did you oh no i did i did i played four uh, upon release and reboot like two years after release and the definitive edition and special edition for four. Okay. Uh, I bring this up because uh, a common feature that has cropped up with the series is turbo mode, but turbo mode is a feature that they, th they usually throw in um, after the fact. So don't make cry three released a special edition and that had a turbo mode. Uh, same thing with don't make cry four and even the reboot. Um, yeah, even the reboot introduced Turbo Mode was definitive. It didn't have it in the base game. Right. But, like, again, we talked, you, like you mentioned this before the recording, that DMC5's base speed, like the standard 100%, is faster than normal. And looking back, I do think that's true, uh, but the lack of Turbo Mode still threw me off. Like, I... At this point, since I'm like playing through DMC4 for the review right now, and I just finished the Nero part, I I already have the muscle memory for all the combos and the pauses and you know roulette and whatever, and it threw me off a lot. It did. I did get used to it because I played it way more than I should or way more than it's justified, and like right now I'm used to it, and I can like turn my brain from DMC4 to DMC5 willy-nilly, like I can do that. But I still think that if there's a special edition plan or a free update, who knows, because Bloody Palace is a free update. Uh, As it should. <laughs> the game, yeah, well, yeah. I think Turbo Mode is still maybe not as necessary as it has been in the past, but it would still be very appreciated, especially by the higher level players, like, you know, Donguri and Fosh and Chaser Tech and sure. all the people who live this game and breathe it. And I think we need Turbo Mode, but 
the thing that ties into turbo mode is the performance because essentially the console has to render 20% more stuff like faster. It has to do more shit at an increased rate. And given how the game looks and performs right now, I feel and I'm afraid that the turbo mode might be exclusive to like PS4 Pro and Xbox One X. I hope it's not, but I mean, who knows? I mean, people have to remember that it's it's not difficult to implement that kind of thing because of the way that processing works. So I think it would be understandable if that were to happen that way. Um, but I think by doing it the way that they decided to, where the current speed is like a nice compromise in between the middle, I think that's the best way that they could have gone about it. Yeah, definitely. Because they're like, you're not give, like Capcom is not giving us the base 100 is giving us quote unquote 110 since they might not be able to give us turbo mode because like frankly turbo mode is not nearly as important as people say it is because yeah it's awesome it's the way to play dmc but with everything that the team is doing there like a new playable character wrapping up the sons of sparta storyline making a playable like Turbo mode is probably lower on the priority list than a lot of people think where it should be. Not only that, but uh, on the PC version, I would not be surprised if there's a mod, <laughs> you know? <laughs> like uh, Obviously, obviously, because Capcom and mod support have been very close friends recently. Yes. And that's also really good. And Capcom has been really good so I'm sh I'm ever since so I Resident Evil 7. So as I said before, I think it's the I think it's the right amount of compromise where on the consoles they try they 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 sped it up as much as they could without compromising the performance. And it's for PC, I'm pretty sure you know mods are going to be on top of that, so PC owners will be happy. And I'm I wouldn't be surprised if in the future they either they patch it or they'll do the same thing. I I, I hope they don't release like oh here's a special edition or definitive edition or whatever. I I hope they don't do that. But I mean, down the line they might do it again and implement turbo mode that way. We'll have to wait and see. Maybe that is also an option. But speaking of special edition, I have discussed this with a friend of mine, uh, my best friend, who is a huge DMC fan. Like, he grew up with a franchise just like me. And every game has had a special edition. Well, well not one and Aside two. from one and two. You've like, yeah, aside from one and two. Three had special, four had special, reboot had definitive. And I think that, yes, it should get a special edition, but instead of making me buy the same game again, because if they do it that way, it's going to cost 60. It's not going to be a reduced price, at least not on launch. And I think it should be implemented in a, like an upgrade pack. Like you pay 20 or 30 bucks and your standard copy of DMC5 that you have installed will download a bunch of new shit and it will turn into special edition. Yeah, that, I think I think, I think that would right be fair. Um, but then again, we may not get that uh, either because I think after this, Hideaki Atsuno is going to start working on Dragon's Dogma 2. Maybe. Maybe, but Atsuno did say at some point in his career that he's not going to do another DMC after 4, which I think he said that while 4 was in development. I'm, but, well, you know... Look at where we are. Well, circumstances are very different, though, because Devil May Cry 4's development was very rushed. Hell. Yeah, Devil May Cry 4 did not end up the game that Itsuno wanted. Um, well, yeah, absolutely not. Absolutely um, not. There was going to be an entire section where Dante went to hell. Um, it was planned that Dante was going to have, like, more weapons than he ever had before. Like, that... There was a lot of that stuff. That he would have his own bosses, his own campaign, not retreading Nero's steps, the whole shebang. But Yeah, Don't know, Make Cry 4 was supposed to, to be a huge game, but because of development woes and uh, Capcom slashing the budget and reducing development time, we kind of got the gimped game that we did. And 
that's why he was like, I'm sure like he was planning for Don't Make Cry 4 to be like the end all be all. And it didn't turn out that way. And that's probably why he felt like it would, it would be dishonorable to leave the Don't Make Cry series as is. And that's why he's now like, no, Don't Make Cry 5 now is going to be the end-all be-all. Possibly, but I, time will tell. We'll see. Uh, maybe that's the truth. Maybe that's what's going to happen. Maybe it's just a dude who wants a break and in five, six years realizes that, hey, I mean... I can do another DMC. Fuck, why not? Maybe, Maybe that's going to happen. Maybe. We don't know. Yeah. Um, but uh, another thing I wanted to talk about, I'm sorry, is uh, there's no jump canceling in the demo. You don't have enemy step, which kind of sucks. Well, enemy but, st- like we know it's in enemy there. Step, like, we know it's in enemy there. step has been a uh, purchasable move. So just because it wasn't in yeah. the demo does not necessarily yeah. mean that it won't be in the game. Oh, it is in the game. We've seen plenty of jump canceling in all the Dante showcases and whatnot. So, I mean, the only this is the nitpick of the demo more so than the nitpick of the okay. game because you know I want to I want to jump cancel stuff. Mm. I feel restricted. That seems kind of weird though. That jump cancel would be a purchasable ability, but I mean, was wasn't enemy step a purchasable ability in four? Yes, enemy step was. Um, even though enemy yeah. step was just an innate ability that Dante had in Devil May Cry 3. Mm-hmm. He did all the Cerberus jump attack spam. Oof. But Oof. in Devil May Cry 4, um, yeah, they made enemy step a purchasable ability, but they did not make jump canceling a purchasable ability. So are they going to make that? Uh, that, that seems weird to me, but we'll have to wait and see, I suppose. It might be... Uh, when you purchase enemy step, you magically gain the ability to jump cancel. You just like in a standard way, maybe, but like it's in the game. We know it's in it, the game. It so. could also be that the demo is an older build and they just hadn't implemented yeah. it yet. I'm pretty confident that the demo is an older build because I watched uh, one of the first playthroughs of the demo after I played the demo and it's the exact same. There's nothing that's different about it. Right. So um, and there are probably improvements that they're making to the game that are not reflected in the demo because I, I believe I've heard like Itsuno and, and team go like, hey, what do you guys think? We want feedback. And, uh, you know, those changes that they've gotten, I mean, uh, those changes that they've implemented due to the feedback that they've gotten – does not reflect in the demo. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, they also changed Nero's charge shot a lot, which is something I didn't even pay attention to as the hype train was going, because like I, I couldn't be fucked to care about how they changed charge shots amongst all the hype. But like in DMC4, you just hold down LT or, or X. I have it bound to LT. And once it glows three times, you get a big, big boom on top of your room room. So here it's different. Here, when you hold your shoot button, uh, Nero loads three bullets into his mag, three pairs of bullets into his mag, and you just have three stand, three shots that are more powerful than your standard shot. So I think that's that's a good thing because I see a lot of people myself included, over-relying on charge shots, because I think, at least on the normal difficulty, you could decimate anything with charge shot. Boss, enemy, like, it didn't matter. Everything went down with charge shot three. And now there's, like, more balance and more skill, and it's like a... It it introduces a method of resource management. Like, do you want to use this now? Because then you'll have to reload and, you know, take a break. Nero's charge shot always kind of bugged me in Don't Make Cry 4 because it just took so long. Yeah, and it takes a, it takes a hell of a long time to charge. So I'm happy that they changed it because I I think it should have just worked some more like how Dante does it where you just hold on for a little bit and then boom, you got some, some powered up shots and that's it. While with Nero, you have to like wait, and it's like, oh, it's turning blue now, and then it's like, oh, it's red now, and it's like, oh, really? <laughs> yeah, like, especially since 
I don't know how to fight some of the enemies yet, and I just whenever I like hit a wall with Nero, I just oh well, I guess I'll use charge shot and not have fun because it's gonna kill everything anyway. Mm -hmm. That was one of my main problems. But f Devil Breakers are so good, they're so good. I can't like emphasize it enough because you only have two breakers in that build you have uh overture which is the uh i think that's the shockwave hand the electric shockwave hand and you have gerbera which is the one with the air dash that looks very much like a scale ripped straight from the reboot for some reason they're both very fun uh using them is very fun using them is pretty hard too and at this point, given that I'm not really used to the game yet, uh, I don't feel the need to uh, replace my, uh, I mean, swap through my breakers. Because you always have, if you hold down B and do this big flashy attack, you lose your breaker. And even though you have three more Gerberas, you automatically swap to the next Overture. So you can always do a move that will lead you to the next breaker in the list. So even though the pasta breaker is the only one that make, gives you the ability to change them, uh, even if Nero doesn't get that ability to like breaker swap is what it's probably going to be called, I'm fine with not being able to switch breakers because their order and how you play with them, how you use those moves, it it really defines Nero as his own guy, because I never really liked the Devil Bringer to begin with. Yeah. Okay. Because, um, I'm sorry, like, the, every time you kill a boss with Dante, you get a new Devil Arm, but I beat Kratos as Nero, and I get a skill that makes me hold enemies as a, sh like... Yeah. Mm. That I, what I always felt was weird about that move was not the move itself, but that like the game doesn't really even tell you about it. But yeah, I always thought that was weird. Kind of. Um, yeah, kind of. So, because a lot of people were kind of, I guess, disappointed in that uh, the way that the Devil Breakers work, like you can't cycle through them yourself. You have to use them, and then like you just. And that, when you do, then it just goes to the next one. Um, how did you feel about the system when you were playing the game? Um, it's not as bad as everyone says it is, because you don't lose, swap to the next breaker if you just use uh, the skill. Because every breaker has uh, more than one move. You have pressing B, just, just pressing B. You have the ability to charge the move on the ground, you can press B in the air and charge the move in the air and use it in the air. So you have potentially four moves to use with one breaker. But pressing and like tapping B does not force you to cycle over. Only the charged animations break your breaker and swap you over to the next one. So it's it's you, you're still in control of which move you want to do, and you're still in, like, I can use the uh, air dash, but still keep the current breaker, and then use its charge attack. Okay. So I still have the option to do that, and that's really So good. the only time you break a breaker is if you use its charged version of the attack. Or if you're hit while using it, slash if you get hit while you're charging it. So you got to be very careful with how you use mm -hmm. it, because if I zone and if i hold b and charge it and if i get hit by a speck of dust gone that's my breaker and that's my potential plan of what i wanted to do so now, now you have to rearrange how you want to approach the situation i think that's fair i think it makes sense because of course do may cry is all about style it's not stylish to get hit you should no, be punished it's, not. it's really not uh I don't think I have any other nitpicks aside from the fact that the core gameplay loop outside of combat is still get thing, put it in a thing so you can go further. But now, uh, the only 
quote unquote thing that you get is a mid hog hatchling. But like these things have interactive animations now, like you see Nero pick it up. There's a big text box with a, with an animated uh, model of what you picked up. And then you see Nero put the thing in. So even though the system is quite dated, at least now it looks good. So you have visual feedback on what you're doing. Okay. So that's kind of good, kind of bad. But I mean, as long as I get to vroom vroom my sword, I don't really care about what you <laughs> what I have to do beforehand. Now, we've also seen the trailer, and I think we should talk about that a little bit. A little bit, yes. So one thing about the trailer that kind of made me, uh, I don't know, I thought it was a little weird was how V can change his hair. So does that, what do you think this means? Does, do you think V has some sort of like bloodline connection to Dante and Nero and Virgil? Or is he, uh, I don't know. What do you think? I do think that uh, V is somehow connected to the Sparta bloodline, but that's, this is a take that I have not seen yet. And uh, it basically hinges on, like, this take hinges on grammar. And that's that's it. Because in the demo, there, right before you fight a Goliath in the initial cutscene, Nero asks Goliath if, like, he's looking for a dude, uh, walks around with a cane, have you seen him or did you snack on him already? Or something along the lines. Did you snack on him is the proper question. And then Goliath just stares at him and, and says, your blood is much more valuable to me. So if that your is not aimed directly at Nero and grammar, used collectively to address both Nero and V, that could imply that V is V also has some ties to Sparta. The and way, you know, white well, hair. well, I, I don't know. The way that that's phrased, it seems more to me that he's saying that V's blood is lesser and that Nero's blood is is better. That could also be a thing, but I don't know. That just the way it appeared to me when I played the game, like it, it just seems disjointed to like. Nero asks him about V, and he says that, you know what, no, fuck him. Your blood is a lot more valuable to me, and I won't snack on you. So, I mean, what really are you trying to say here? Is this, is this a hint that the community might have missed? I don't know. But I think it's an idea worth considering at the very least until the game comes out. Because I don't think we're going to get any more huge review trailers, because everything's been revealed. And they're not going to show off Virgil. Like, fuck no. No. But um, speaking of V, his fighting style, based on the trailer, seems a lot more passive. It's because he's using, uh, like, his, his summoned creatures in order to attack for him. And, and, I, and it looks like you can occasionally, like, jump in with a cane if you want to. Um, I think this is really neat, and I think it's interesting, because every other character that we've ever played as... Uh, is a very like i'm not going to say straightforward necessarily but like comparatively speaking it's i'd say it's more direct so i think instead of just like oh let's just create another character with another direct type of move set and fighting style i do applaud them for like hey let's do something different for this type of gameplay let's let's have a character that plays like substantially different from pretty much everyone else in the series and I don't know if that will necessarily translate into a fun move set, but I, at least looking at it, I'm like, okay, that's neat. That's like cool that they're doing um, something that's like vastly different. How do you feel? I'm, I was very excited by the prospect of V before I saw him because we knew that he summoned things and that's how he fought, and I got kind of a Chaos Legion vibe from it. Oh, mm, you're you're bringing but... up Chaos Legion. Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah, I haven't really played it, but I'm aware of it. My friend played it, and I oh, watched him. Play, I beat so. that game when it came out. Really? God damn! Yeah. I never had a PS2. I don't know. <laughs> it, it's not great. <laughs> it's really not. It's like a weird <laughs> mishmash of a uh, 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 budget Devil May Cry, budget Dynasty Warriors, and for some reason, kind of, sort of Final Fantasy VIII. 
Uh -huh. It is a bizarre mishmash that doesn't really work. Okay, so I shouldn't play it. Not really. <laughs> very, okay. very grindy as well, especially the U.S. version. Apparently, the Japanese version is way, way easier for some reason. The American version, they, they pumped up the difficulty a lot, and it just forces you to grind a lot in order to become strong enough to get through the game. But anyways, this is too much focus on fucking chaos lesion of all things. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, back to V. His prospect really excited me because yeah, it's different. Like you don't slash slash, you summon summon, apparently. But seeing him, he's different than what I expected him to be. I thought he would have uh, a more a more summoner thing. Like when you press attack, something appears and hits the enemy instead of you. Something like Kenshi from Mortal Kombat, where he jo -Jo. just has a spectral shadow. I don't know JoJo. I haven't watched it. You don't oh, know JoJo. Uh, <laughs> I will. It's on my watch list. Don't worry. Okay, what? then more like Persona. <sighs> Never played Persona either? <laughs> no. Okay. Oof. But I played it. Yeah, I planned it. Okay. But like okay. That's, 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 that's the kind of thing that I was expecting. Not a panther that was that's the enemy from DMC1 and a bird flying around and them doing stuff. And that was weird and unexpected. But I, can, I can't help but tie V into Sparta because white hair, number one, but he summoned a bunch of canes around an enemy and that's basically like Virgil, come on. No, you yeah, summon swords. That's Vir that's what Virgil does. That's his thing. And also the kaiju battle was rad. Because that shows that you can fight the same boss with multiple characters, but instead of the DMC4 thing where the interactivity that you had with Nero is lost with Dante. And for Dante, Burial, for example, is just a damage sponge that swings from time to time. Mm -hmm. Especially since it's the first boss of the game. But with V, you see contextualized animations and the boss is designed in a way that you can fight him with both characters and still get the same level of interactivity and polish like the sense of polish that i got from seeing that i can climb a big monster and fight goliath that way like that was really rad and i'm very excited to see how they're gonna retool and how are they gonna expand on that idea with the other bosses in the game i agree with that i also thought that was really cool and also br kind of brought the question like uh what what is the nature of the summons because the creature that he summoned to fight the, the boss looked kind of like the boss in a way but not quite so it makes me think like is the things that he's summoning like are they related to the, the monsters in some way like can he create facsimiles of the monsters that you fight in the game or the demons rather or is it just that he has his own like variations of monsters and that one just so happened to be kind of similar to the boss or or is it kind of like Bayonetta, where it's like a Wicked Weave moment? Maybe, yeah, maybe that maybe, was a Wicked Weave moment. Maybe maybe that was a Wicked Weave moment. That's a very good point. I haven't thought about that. Maybe it's kind of the thing like in DMC4 where you use the Devil Bringer at a good time and you see a pretty cutscene. Uh, maybe if you do a thing with V at an opportune moment, you'll get a Bayonetta moment. Maybe that's, that could also be an option. Oh, I have one more question going back to the demo. Were there any QTEs? No, none. Absolutely Good. none. None. As much as I none. love Bayonetta, I was I hate the QTEs in them. They so suck. much. So They're much. So bad. So, so bad. I'm, and I'm. It was always my one fear that Del May Cry would one day fall into the QTE trap, and I'm glad that they still haven't. I mean, granted, we haven't played the full game yet, so they might bamboozle us. But so far, there hasn't been any, and I'm happy about that. Yeah, no QTEs. You, you, as soon as the screen fades and you see a cutscene, you put the controller down, you watch the pretty cutscene, then you pick it back up and play the game. 
Good. And it's not even like the whole uh, Kamiya-ism where as soon as the cutscene ends, you have like three frames to dodge or a spider is going to jump on your face. Oh, yeah, or Kamiya loves that. The, yeah, like... <clears throat> but, I mean, he has his own way of designing games and he designs games around memorizing fucking everything because that's the kind of games he grew up with so he just kind of has this heritage or some shit but like i can't take it i can't i don't have that level of attention and my memory's fucked so i feel i feel like it's i feel like it's suno's games are a bit more focused on character like a player expression not yeah just, definitely not, not to say that Kamiya doesn't allow that. He does, especially if you play Bayonetta, which has too many moves that are honestly kind of redundant. But but um, I think Itsuno is better about that sort of thing. And I think Itsuno is also better about each of the moves mattering. Because again, going back to Bayonetta, there's a lot of moves that are just kind of just there and they don't really need to be there. While in Devil May Cry, each move has a use in a certain situation every 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 use every move has a certain utility mm -hmm. exactly did you did you feel that sense of utility still uh retained in uh the demo not with enemy that not with standard enemies unfortunately but then again we this is what i think and that's probably the way it is because we only see two enemies and a boss in the demo one is mm -hmm. you know the bug things which finally enemies with blood i'm not gonna slash at literal bags of sand anymore thank <laughs> fuck and that was a big problem with devil may cry 4 as well was the enemy variety was kind of wanting so hopefully devil may cry 5 fixes that like you said that there's only like a couple enemy types but then there's again, only two there's only two. There's the lesser demons and the the same things from DMC three, like the base enemy from DMC three. Right. So, but uh, uh, like, there's gonna be the whole utility with the moves thing, but like with later enemies, probably. But like, who knows what level that takes place in, right? Like that might be the very first level of the game. That might be the second. So, just because like. These enemies, you know, may, are not, like, the best. Or, or it makes sense for, like, the earlier enemies to be more simplistic and easier to deal with, is what I'm trying to say. So it, it's, it could be that, like, the more you played the game and more enemies are introduced, more utility is going to be necessitated. Yeah, definitely. But as far as we're concerned, this might be a section of the game for, like, Nero's let's say, eighth mission, except they just took the enemies that are in the actual game and put in the normal enemies for this build just to, you know, you, you don't, I don't want to get dunked with Hell Vanguard, uh, six Hell Vanguards as soon as I start playing a new game, a demo of a new game. So this, I, I mean, I, who knows? I kind of doubt it will be the eighth mission, given that well, each, each character only has 10 missions. Yeah, but, like, that's my point, that it might be the fourth or the fifth and with just the enemies replaced. Right, uh, yeah, I get, I get the point you're trying to make. Yeah, that might be a thing. I don't know, but I'm... It wouldn't be we, the first we've time. We've seen... Yeah, it wouldn't be the first time. Games do that all the time, but we've seen a lot more enemies in trailers. And, right. like, I know there's going to be variety. I just yeah. hope Blitzes don't make the... Just don't don't put Blitz in, please. Please. No oh, blitz. I hate blitz so much. No, yeah, blitz is not fun to fight. No. But I actually want to know what you think about the prospect of having more playable characters, as in Lady Trish, uh, Virgil, and wink, wink, Capcom, Lucia, please show me Lucia. She's fun. Well, so far they've said that it's only going to be Nero, Dante, and V. So, so far, and so far. Um, but again, if they if they so decide, they could release a special edition down the road. Um, 
And if that's the case and we do get to play as those characters again, I would be for it, but I would I would also hope that they wouldn't do it exactly the same way because kind of the problem with the way that they do it in 3 and especially 4 is just that you just play through the same levels again with the different characters and that's it. So uh, That is true, but I have a different problem with... Uh the extra playable characters okay. not so much in three to some degree but not as much as four like in four i don't find lady fun granted i haven't I, played much yeah, with her me neither but like like it's gunslinger the character and i I'm, I'm not the biggest gunslinger fan so no oh, i feel the same i don't know virgil um, is just like, here, you played the base game numerous times, so here's a character that does not uh, require as much study to play effectively, or whatever. Uh, but, like, here's your fun character. Like, that's Virgil. He's not meant to be played in a way that, oh, I'm going to beat the game with Virgil, and it's going to be hard, and it's going to have his own thing. But, no, like, he's fun, and that's why you play him. Yeah, he he's, no he's just meant substance. to be broken and OP. Yeah. But, now, here's the thing, though. If they do decide to do the special edition route and they do bring those characters back to play as, they probably are just going to stick with, like, eh, just retread through the levels with these characters because they have 30 levels now and you have, like, you have three different campaigns, each of them 10 missions, and you know what? They could just make it so that, oh, if you're going through... Uh, Dante's levels with Trish, you're going to go through Nero's levels with Virgil, and you can go through uh, V's levels with Lady. That seems that, like that seems to be like what they would do. Maybe, yeah, maybe. It makes the most sense. But, but I really want to touch up on Trish because Trish gets a lot of hate, and I don't know why, because Trish is very, very fun. Because why her, does she get hate? I don't, I don't, I don't know. Like, I. I've seen people say that, you know, Trish is not as fun as Virgil. Well, yeah, duh, Trish is not as fun as Virgil, but she's a lot more fun than Lady, and I have more fun with Trish than I have with Nero. Because well, she has a very intrigue. she has a very simple concept of throw, Sparta, punch and kick. But it's, everything is so satisfying to do that I, like, it's fun. Yeah, I, I, I thought she was a pretty interesting and fun character to play as, so I don't really agree with that. So, I don't know. I don't know what people's beef with her is. Me neither. I don't know. She's kind of OP. Yeah, duh. Like, the whole roundhouse. Not the roundhouse. The speedy kick that spins forever. That's kind of bonkers. Ladies' grenades are kind of bonkers. Uh, well, here's here's the thing, right? Um the the main characters the games are about ba the game's balanced around those characters these are just bonus characters thrown in for fun it's not meant yeah, to be but... balanced it's not meant to be like finely tuned to them it's just hey you know we we made these extra characters and they're fun to because they're really fun to play as you know go nuts yeah that's true but i think they went a bit too overboard with Virgil and Trish. Virgil more so. Because if you, like, take all of this, like, all of the resources and make all three characters, the three extra characters, balanced, because Lady does not stand a chance against Trish, and it's like, fuck, Virgil, that's a completely different level. If well, they had the, the same level of balance, that would be a lot more fun. The problem because... with Virgil is his, um, I think it's called his focus meter or his concentration uh, meter concentration meter right motivation the problem, meter the problem with that meter is that it you he has one move where you could just hold down the his his uh yamato attack just hold down the triangle or the y button just hold it down and that alone will level like uh, build up that meter like that's that makes it too op like if they if they would have just removed that one little thing then his character wouldn't be nearly as broken. I mean, he'd still be pretty broken, don't get me wrong, but he wouldn't be nearly as broken because what you can do now is you just hold that button down and then you go, you just DT and then you use his like, his ultimate attack and just like wipe Judgment the screen. Cut. 
yeah, judgment sure. not end, as I call it, because you just it's a screen wiping attack that you can farm meter for and literally eliminate any threat. Yeah, it, it just completely oh, breaks the game. So I, th I think if they would have just fixed that, he he would be a little bit more balanced. But yeah, whatever. Yeah, but like, people again, forget that. that yeah. <laughs> people forget that Virgil was pretty broken in three too, because his base damage was a lot higher than Dante's. And I well, actually checked a big that a big reason for that is because uh, Dante is very well balanced because he cannot shoot and and slash at the same time. Virgil can. He can use his summon swords uh, regardless of his animation. So, yeah. so he could just like completely decimate. Even without that, his the the the, the damage values like he attacks so fast with such high damaging moves that you that unless you pit it pit him against Dante who's using the just release with full DT charge, like Virgil is always going to beat the boss faster. Like that's what I think. Yeah. Unfortunately. That's in three and four is in whew. Alright, is there is there anything else to discuss? I don't think so. I think right. we're done. <laughs> all right. Are we done? I think so. Yeah, We've been recording that's all my notes. Minutes. God damn, I'm gonna have to... Yeah, have fun with this. Have fun with this. I'll do it tomorrow. <laughs> anyway, yeah, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, this has been a video that is probably longer than it should have been. <laughs> uh, because I was aiming at like 20, 25 minutes, but mm, I, I don't know. So yeah, I'll put up my DMC4 review soon, then the reboot, then DMC5. God, so close, so close. <laughs>